Hello students, I am Rajasri ma'am and today I am with the chapter with the lesson a short story uh, a shot in the dark by H.H. H. Munro. H. H. Mun the full name of H.H. H. Munro was Hector Hugh Munro but he was uh, he used to write in, a, in his pen name or pseudonym called Saki. He was born in uh, Burma or Myanmar uh, today now it is known as Myanmar in 1870 and uh, wrote very many short stories novels uh, etc he was educated in england and joined police force in burma or myanmar but uh, and again he returned to england returned england and there he again joined uh, as journalist in the newspaper he also uh, worked in army as a soldier in World War I and was killed in the on the Western Front. This is a humorous story um, about a person called Philip Sleatherby. Philip Sleatherby settled himself down in an almost empty railway carriage with the pleasant feeling of starting off and on an agreeable and profitable trip. The Philip Sutherby was uh, settled himself down. That means, got him. It uh, was in a railway carriage. Was uh, settled himself. Sit, uh, sat in a railway carriage, which was almost empty, with the pleasant feeling of starting off and on. And he was thinking about the trip. It was very uh, profitable for him. He was thinking in his mind and uh, feeling pleasure for it. And he was bound for Brill Manor. That means he had to go to Brill Manor. Bound for is the phrase which one has one is compelled or had to uh, has to do. But uh, if it is followed by a verb, then it becomes bound to. That means uh, I am bound to do it. That means I have to do it. But here it is followed by a noun Brill Manor. That is why it is bound for. The county residence of his new acquaintance, Mrs. Saltpen Jago. He, he, she was a, this, uh, she's a lady called Mrs. Saltpen Jago, uh, who had, uh, with whom he had been acquainted uh, nowadays. And it was her uh, residence there in the Brill Manor. The Brill Manor was her residence. And Honoria Solpin Jago was a person of some social importance in London, of considerable importance and influence in the county of Chalkshire. She, uh, she, was, uh, she had influence in London as well as in the county of Chalkshire. Ch county is the territory of uh, in the village side of, uh, of England, like our Panchayat area. The uh, county of Chalkshire was... Uh, of immediate personal interest to Miss uh, to Philip Sleatherby, it was held for the government in the present parliament by a gentleman who did not intend to seek re-election, and Sleatherby was under serious consideration by the party managers as his possible successor, and the, the, because this territory there was an election of the administration of this territory and it was held by the by a person who did not want the re-election but the party wanted uh, Sleatherby to um, uh, to fight this contest in this count in this territory or in the Chalkshire County and Mr. the Saltpen Jago influence was not an item which could be left out of consideration and Sol, as Sol, Mrs. Solpen Jago was a was a very was a very influential lady. She could help him a lot, and so it was. Uh, it should not be left out of consideration. That means it should not be ignored. Her influence should not be ignored. And Philip Sleatherby had been delighted at meeting Honoria as a small and friendly uh, luncheon party. Still more gratified when she had asked him down to her country house. And Sledarbhai had become very much delighted when she asked him in a luncheon party in the in the in a visit in the in her in her country house and to stay from Friday to Tuesday. 
he was obviously on approval that means he accepted the accepted the invitation at that moment and if he could secure the goodwill of his hostess he might count on the nomination as an assured thing and uh, it was uh, mrs solpen jago she could help him to get the nomination uh, for sure uh, uh, for uh, confirm and uh, that is why he was very much pleased at that time uh, to, uh, he was very much eager to uh, to please her solpen mrs solpen jago if he failed to find favor in her eyes well the local leaders would probably cool off in their early enthusiasm for him uh, but uh, if she would not favor him then the local leaders would also be be uh, also come down and um, and um, he, their enthusiasm will would go off and among the passengers dotted about the platform Uh, on the platform, uh, awaiting their respective trains, Slatherby spotted a club acquaintance and beckoned him up to the carriage window for a chat. And when the uh, passengers were there in the platform, dotted out, that means uh, were just standing here and there, uh, awaiting for their trains. And Slatherby spotted a club acquaintance. He he found an acquaintance of him. Uh, that means uh, somewhat uh, whom he knew uh, and he beckoned him beckoned him means they called him by a gesture to come to him to come to the car, uh, carriage window and have a chat to uh, talk with him oh you are staying with mrs solpen jago for the weekend are you i expect you will have a good time she has the reputation of being an excellent hostess she will be useful to you too if parliamentary project hello you are off goodbye and uh, he said uh, go, went on saying the, that that uh, solpen jago would be a uh, uh, would be helpful for him and those everyone knew about this thing and he gave, went off from there he was not interested and slitherby waved goodbye to his friend pulled up the window and turned his attention to the magazine lying on his lap so uh, when he went off then slitherby started reading a newspaper a magazine on his lap he had scarcely glanced at a couple of pages however when a smothered curse caused him to glance hastily at the other only other occupant of the carriage when he started reading a couple of pages then he saw that uh, the he could hear a curse curse means abusive language from someone in the carriage and he he looked up and he saw that a person only person uh, he, he was going with him in that coach uh, was cursing and his uh, what type of man was that uh, his traveling companion was a young man of about 22 uh, with dark hair fresh complexion and the blend of smartness and disarray that is typical of a rambler that person was very smart at the same time he was smart and disarray disarray means uh, messy messy or disorderly uh, he was looking disorderly or messy but also it it seemed that he he is a smart person and that is typical of a rambler rambler is a person who just uh, walk about in a uh, village area and he was searching furiously and ineffectually for some elusive or non existent object from time to time he dug a sixpenny coin out of a waistcoat pocket and stared at it ruefully then recommenced the futile searching operation the person was uh, trying to search find out something which is elusive the elusive means which uh, which has no existence but person can see it um, that is elusive and non existent which was not there actually he was trying to find out an object which was not actually there from time to time uh, that means sometimes he dug a sixpenny coin out of a waistcoat pocket at that time he found a sixpenny coin from his waistcoat pack, uh, pocket and stared at it ruefully ruefully means um, regretfully he was looked at it then recommenced the futile searching of 
operation he commenced with first he, he saw the coin from his pocket and uh, he found it of no use then he again started the comments comments means to start and he commenced means he again he started searching something uh, then he found a cigarette case matchbox key silver pencil case and railway ticket were turned out on the on the seat bench uh, seat beside him but none of these articles seemed to afford him satisfaction but it seemed that those were of no use to him he cursed again rather louder than before now he cursed <laughs> in a louder uh, in a manner uh, which is which was louder than before and uh, again the vigorous pantomime did not draw forth any remark from slither by who resumed his scrutiny of the magazine but it had no effect on slither by he was just uh, scrutiny but that means reading very carefully his reading he was reading his magazine very carefully and uh, pantomime that person was doing pantomime pantomime is uh, an acting without any speech that means silent acting the person was doing silent acting of finding something searching something but slither by had uh, no effect of it uh, uh, of it uh, of the pant pantomime of that person uh, so uh, students uh, he, in this part uh, this much is in this part and again we will start it in the next video and uh, you will uh, come again for that video thank you for watching and please subscribe this channel